Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Jillian. So, um, I figure since today's Sunday and my husband's doing his tournament, uh, with his, uh, better than work crowd, <laughs> I figure I would just do this recap or just do this, um, keeping up with the information today. And yeah, yesterday I spent the day with, uh, with my husband and, and I know he appreciated me going out on the lake with him. I did do a little bass fishing. I just saw one fish. I didn't catch anything. Um, he loves it. He likes to go before he goes on the tournaments and mark the fish to figure out where they are. And so, yeah, so we were there not too early and not too late. And so it was very hot. It's going to be very hot today. And, you know, the the thing that I felt with being exposed to my husband from him being on the road and me feeling stuff would be the heat in the face. That's what I felt. It's like the, the heat coming up. So this is your first lines of defense. You're breathing in everything because everything else has, has closed openings or Openings are not very easy and accessible because covered by clothing, my skin is like the largest form of defense. So the thing that I that allows my body to assimilate is through my nose and my mouth. And so what I noticed now with all with me reversing everything is the heat in the face. I'll feel the heat come up and then leave. Maybe it might blow my nose. Um, Maybe I cough out, you know, some mucus and stuff, but that was the extent of it. Yeah, we were on the lake yesterday. It was super hot, like my face, a little bit sunburned. And when we came home, like we, we got some takeout because we were, I was done with, I mean, so we came home and we both just passed out. Like after we ate, we both passed out, like seriously. And so then even with my dog, you know, she's now down to her prototype. No, she's, she's pretty skinny right now. I, I understand that. And so I know that um, she likes to eat what we eat, but she doesn't get all the nutrition because she doesn't eat her food. She eats a little bit of our food, but it doesn't eat a lot of it. And so then I'm like, okay, um, I either have to make her a bunch of food and then put it out there and see and play that game, or I just switch to the canned dog food. And hold on, which is perfectly fine. And then force her to eat that and not give her any people food. So I can still give her people food if I want to, but I don't, I'm not going to, unless I plan to make her a bunch of food, which I, I thought I would do that, but I'm like, I don't want to keep wasting people food. Not that I'm going to waste the, the canned food, but I have to play this game of the bow of the wills because she's a pit bull and she's stubborn and where I put it down for a half hour and she doesn't need it, pick it back up. And I keep playing that game, like, n no treats at this point until she, maybe once, until she starts eating her food the way she's supposed to, like, I have to change things up. Obviously, I'm going to walk her a bit. So, there are things that are changing, and I noticed the changes as far as me being exposed to my husband, and then me changing with how I'm going to deal with my dog, because she's finally down to her prototype. And she's, she looks very good, except that she needs to gain some weight, obviously. So, anyways, um... But yeah, so yesterday I was, <laughs> we both, my husband and I both passed out and I woke up earlier than him and, <clears throat> hold on, Jesus. And yeah, I'm, I'm blowing out mucus. Okay. So this is what it's like when you're around people, you blow out mucus. Um, is that bad or good? I mean. When you're falling asleep after hanging out, after hanging out outdoors in the hot sun, your body's repairing. Um, I wasn't super hungry and I wasn't not not hungry. I think I had a little bit of my egg after around 10 o'clock at night, but I had like a hamburger right afterwards. We didn't eat all day yesterday. And I wasn't, I mean, actually we had one, we had one little Debbie's Nutter Butter things when we're on the lake because we didn't plan out like the eating thing very well, which is no big deal. We weren't there to eat. We were there to, to fish and him marking fish. So, and so anyway, so being out there, and I don't want to be out there all the time because, you know, a lot of sun, it's, I mean, it really definitely, uh, gave me some color and, but, but I mean, I feel fine. 
I, I felt strong yesterday. I mean, uh, I feel strong today. Um, yeah, uh, you still have to take care of your, um, your wormhole <laughs> and make sure everything comes out because even the heat can keep lock thing can lock things in. And so that's, I mean, that's, and let me just segue into this whole thing with, uh, America, the last great experiment. They understood that everything starts and ends with the anus. Okay. And so they figured out who's they, the powers that be, they figured out America, everything is about God, love of country and barbecues and a whole scripted platform of religion, science, experiments, and politics. But isn't that, isn't the UK and Europe like that too? Yeah, they have that, but Amer what is it about America that is different than the UK or than Britain or England or Scotland or Ireland? What is it about America that's different? I mean, cause England is a lot of innovation. They have Cambridge, well, they have Oxford. They have all these universities and stuff that, that the prince and the princess of Wales and the queen and king of England, and they all go to and all the upper echelon. So what is it about America? I, I don't know. America was the land of, of the free, home of the brave. What is it about America that sets apart from England? Not much difference. When you think about it, not much difference. We have the tech industry, yeah, we have biotech, but so does England, so does India, so all these different countries. We have a heavy ev evangelical presence here. Yeah, we have a lot of Judaism. We don't have a lot of Muslims. If we do, they don't say too much because of all the history that's been going on. But a huge Christian population, like huge. I mean, that's what first started America was the, with the colonists, you know, the, the Puritans. They, they wanted the religious freedom, okay? That's the story that was told. Was it really actually what so? Hell, we don't know. But that was the story that was told that that's what was enforced down our throats as far as American history and why we are where we are and who we are, who we, you know, and all that stuff. Why we have Thanksgiving and July 4th and the barbecues and everything is American as apple pie. And then God, love, and country. And the word God is on every single dollar that we pass through. We have churches on every corner. We have hospitals on every corner. We have oncology on every corner. We have funerals on every corner. Um, and we have people who have been programmed on every corner and all their specific things. And then you, and then when you, and I'm listening to the, the documentary about, you know, American and the evangelicals. I'm like, and you hear it, you know, the militia, all the different militias that are out there trying to fight for their, for, for their country, their patriotism. And I'm in the heart of, of major patriotism. I mean, my husband and everybody he hangs out with all patriotic, all veterans from different wars, whether it's World War II, Vietnam War, the Gulf War, Okay, I'm like right in the middle of it. And here I am talking like, uh, <laughs> you've been programmed, the Bible scripted, everything scripted. Holy shit. But what are you going to do? I mean, California, you know, you, you got to work so hard and, and play this game and you have to be biochemically up to the, up to par. And I wasn't biochemically. I mean, I, if I didn't have the PMS, I would not, I wouldn't be here in Ohio. I wouldn't be looking to figure out how to strategize my survival in this. If I could survive in California, I couldn't fucking survive in California. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you realize everything is scripted and now you're seeing the walls coming down. And so what built up America and built up the world was all the, all the innovation, the viruses, which is all the different um, defense systems and the programming. And that's what's going to take down the different walls of the world and all the, the, the barriers that separate people culturally, intellectually, physically, and all that. And they're saying also, too, there's been a slump in the V sales. 
Biotech sees a slump in the V cells, the therapy sales. They're saying, oh, it's going to pick back up later on this year. Well, of course, it's going to pick back up come, uh, what, August, September, October? Because already people are, are out there. I mean, I was out there, and you see me blowing out my mocos. I don't have any headache, but I can feel that, there, that, that, that my, but my defense system up here is defending the rest of my body. So the only thing I have to do is feel the heat. The heat is bringing up all the mucus to come up here to protect this is my line of defense right here. That's what, that's what's pretty awesome is that eventually, eventually your lines of defenses, especially your first lines of defense will be so on target that you'll even feel it coming. To, you'll even feel it developing. That's the heat. That's when people feel like infection or they feel fevers. Infection is the massive amount of defenses developing because of a massive amount of, of, of exposure that the body wasn't prepared for. And this is why people die is because they don't have a, a good release for a release presence. They can't release the stuff, release police. Hmm, that sounds the same. Okay. So they're not releasing at the, at the level that they are producing. And so people drown in their mucus. They, they have, they, they get sepsis. They have their own T cells and B cells cannibalize them. Or they're starving themselves, not trying to feed the the infection or whatever, and so it calms down. It's it's like, but then it's eating the person out from the inside. Okay, so it's it's pretty crazy. So so you can't eventually go out there, and you won't pay for it so hard. That you're going to be like, what the hell? Why would I go out there? I mean, you will for a while because, again, many people are have many predispositions. Like, everything is relative. You know, when, when Stephen Hawking is saying that everything comes from nothing, nothing comes from nothing because there's, there's no thing. So you can't build something from nothing when there's nothing. It's nothing. So everything is something. So Stephen Hawking is a shill. And then so the whole black hole bullshit I'm not even going to listen to. Albert Einstein really made it, made a point. Everything is relative. And that the word God or even believe in God, though they said he wasn't, you know, he was an atheist. So I don't know what the heck that means. If you're not atheist and you're not believing in God, then what are you? I don't even know. An atheist, an atheist can even be a science person. Okay. So I don't even know what that means, but everything is relative. Everything's relative to your perspective. Like again, when you're red shifting, blue shift is red is relative to your perspective. Just because something is red shifting or blue shifting, red shifting towards you, blue shifting away from you, or vice versa, doesn't mean that's the same for everybody else. It just means that it just depends on your perspective. And why does it mean on your perspective? Because you have predispositions. You have a reality that you're living with. You have B cells and T cells and things that have been programmed. Whether it's love, God, of country, and American is apple pie, you've been programmed with that for years. Shoved down your throat. God, shoved down your throat. Religion, shoved down your throat. Politics shoved down your throat. All the science that's shoved down your throat to where you're, it's programmed your B cells and T cells. And then you have all these other different cultures and belief systems and, and whatever shoved down people's throat, developing, creating people's realities. And so there's no way even I could reach those that have been so heavily programmed with religion, with scripture, shoved down their throats ever since day one. And then me talking about the whole Anu Sky, KY, everything starts and ends with the anus. <laughs> You're like, what the hell, Jillian? Well, it's true. And so when you think about simulations, everything is, is developed by words. You change the words. You change the simulation, and then when you change the simulations, because you are actively putting together chemistry and objects and setting your life up around your simulation, you're finding the science and the physics and the chemistry to back up your words, because those words were developed for a reason, because there's chemistry and science and physics that support those words, or those words wouldn't exist. And sometimes words are, are contradictions like nothing. You cannot create something from nothing. That was something that one of the... One of the courses that I took that's in San Francisco, that was one of the mis the biggest misleading taglines that I didn't realize was misleading. 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna slander the course or say anything about. It. I mean, the course is great. You see what I wrote on my on my biography, but that was one of the biggest smoke and mirrors. I didn't realize was a smoke and mirror until somebody pointed out in my simulation group, the simulation theory. They're like, you know, it's, it's what is up with this science majors that Stephen Hawking is something, you know, you can create nothing from something and no, you can't. And then Maui Reeves, he's in my group and on my Facebook page. He's like saying, well, if the first off thermodynamics says nothing can, or what is it? Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Then how the hell do you get nothing from something? No shit. Fucking good point, Maui. You are really paying attention. Sometimes you guys shock the hell out of me like you are paying attention. And you prove it by like even telling me something that I did. I didn't, I mean, I knew it, but I didn't point it out and put those two together. But absolutely right, Maui Reeves. Stephen Hawking was incorrect. And then I hear that he was a shell for the industry. So even the scientists that are put before you to worship are no different than the icons that they tell you to go and worship in religion. Satan or Jesus or Yahweh or, or Yehovah or this. How do you, you, why worship anyone? Isn't that's why it's so difficult for people who are, who are bilingual or, or, or who are ESL. They have very difficult to learn the nuances of the English language because it's so deceptive. It could add something and take away in like one word or in one term. And you're like, what the hell? Because, you know, because, because a word can, can be like, again, it can be a noun, it could be an adverb and it could be a verb and it can be an, an adjective. And so when you can convert a word that used to be just a noun, like, oh yeah, it used to be Donald Trump, just Trump. Now it seems like, oh, that was so Trump. I have a Trump card. There's Donald Trump. Now you turn that word that used to be a noun that was just describing a person turn it into a pop culture, into an adjective, turn it into a verb, then you start seeing the simulations develop as the agreed upon perception of something is now allowed to proliferate to where now people understand when you say, hey, that's so Trump, or I'm going to Trump you, or here's my Trump card, you get it and you don't even have to have it be explained if you're within that culture. And that's how simulations get developed is through words and the development of words, you take in the taking like etymology, taking one letter that means something, you add on a couple letters, and then a couple letters, now you add on another word on top of that. That's that's like the evolution. The evolution doesn't mean that it came from nothing. No, it came from something. So there's evolution and creation, they both work together. Evolution and creation are not compartmentalized, like they said. And so this is Sunday, and now you're gonna learn about that evolution and creation are actually two word two sides of the same coin. Two words that actually need to be conjoined together and nothing can come, uh, something can never come from nothing. There's always something there. So you're going to want to go the dark matter, the static, the steady state theory, this and that, trying to figure out how, how does the plus and minus, they've always been there. Does it matter where it comes from? No, because you can rack your brain and figure out all the, the scenarios and find every single, you know, storyline that you could think of to justify whether or not life came from over here, over there, or, and that's the wars of humanity is they have to know the beginning and maybe there is no beginning. There is always energy conversion. And so I can see why Einstein gave up Judaism because it's so linear, linear. And then you realize that, okay, well, energy can be created or stored, only converted. So then what, what's this whole point of the whole Genesis, the Exodus, and then all the five books of Moses. That's so linear. And so then I'm like, wait, that's why I never really thought of anything about Judaism for me myself, because I didn't like how things were portrayed, how things were done. There's a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of conflict, even with that religion, even with my family, that my family was not a representation of what I thought a religion, what I thought religion was supposed to be peaceful and, and helping people. And, and what, what does that mean? I don't know what is helping people. What is, what is peaceful? There, it's all relative to, and, and. And so I never really took on any religion because even Christianity was aggressive. And then you hear people call people Satan, call people this, call people that. Or they're saying, oh, you're not as good as me. And, you know, I'm just like, well, what's this? Just no. And then, and then science is where you get the peace. But science can also be used as a religion because you saw how they used Stephen Hawking. 
violating the laws of their of of, of thermodynamics but then like can laws change well here's the thing the laws of thermodynamics as far as energy cannot be created or destroyed there's some very foundational basics because you can't destroy energy because it's always going to convert it's not going to disappear when people die they i mean their body disperses and their and their conscience and all their energy does disperse it's not going to be in a coagulated organized form that is in this specific like form in 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 the in your specific simulation and so when you die yeah you're 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 <laughs> you're decomposing all of your microbes and everything else is scattering into the wind and other entities are going to eat you out from the inside until there's nothing left and then the energy the, the 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 conscience whatever is then released out there and then who knows how far you're going to be scattered into the wind hey sugar okay and so then so then i can understand why then science without worshiping these crazy people i don't say they're crazy because i mean when you look at between einstein and hawking Einstein, yeah, he's type A, type B, per, uh, blood type. And come from a background. He did the whole E equals MC squared, theory of relativity, all that stuff. Great quotes. Probably, yeah, the, the genius of our time. Hawking, I can see why they wanted to promote him as one as such because he had he was so attributed everywhere else and all they did was kinetically, you know, did stuff to his brain his his disability is what gave him a lot of prominence and then of course what his brain was saying about the black holes and the big bang and all that stuff but it, it was very short-sighted and very compartmentalized because you can have a million different big bangs chemical reactions happen all the time death and rebirth happen all the time there wasn't just one single one that happened and created all of this because where do those things come from and even then does it even matter and so then if it doesn't even matter where those things came from, then it's not about one big bang, one singular big bang. It was just a, a bunch of them and where they all originated from, it doesn't even matter. It just is. Just like your computer is just is. It needs to be maintained. Parts and things and stuff need to be upgraded. And is the computer going to wonder where everything comes from? Is it going to go and find out? Well, am I from China or am I from India or am I from America? You know, when, when we have all the different factories in different places because of stuff. And, you know, this doesn't even, does even matter. It just is. Something is maintaining the order of your computer and everything that goes on with it. And then you just keep performing. But not performing so hard where you, you burn yourself out and not underperforming where you're atrophied and you're not having any kind of life come from you or any kind of productivity and so and so that's the thing you know with humans is can they accept that they don't have to know where they come from can they accept that there's a 50 zillion storylines out there that all are tied to cap all are tied to money and tied to wars and tied to discrimination and tied to so much stuff and then what happened you know way back in antiquity if we're going to play the timeline game of why they decided to diverge from, from you know, people minding their own business in the bedroom to them being like, okay, it's us against them. You know, the LGBT versus the, the binary, the binary versus non-binary. Well, that's under divide and conquer. That was part of America's great experiment. Okay? And it, it bled out all over the place. I mean, you have a lot of discrimination in other countries when it comes to, to those that are non-binary or same sex or this or whatever even i came from like kind of like well we we're you can you can only make a person from this and this well yeah you need a sperm and an egg do you have to call it man or woman no you don't call it you need a sperm and an egg where they come from it doesn't even matter right so when you think about it the names of people the labels of people can change all the time the reason why we have the labels of man and woman and and boy and child and girl is to differentiate the societal constructs of their place in this world and then all the different you know duties and lifestyles and things that they must undergo so when you, a man versus a boy a man is mature a boy is immature he's not 18 so you call him a boy until he's 18 and then he's a man even though he may not act like a man he is now legally a man 
Okay, but anything below 18, you're still a boy. And so people have the organized sense of understanding be the differentiate between, you know, what is appropriate to do with a human relative to the to the age. Now, people are not obviously mature enough all the time to make those kind of decisions on the on, for themselves. But legally, you are supposed to be an adult at this age. So that's why we have all these different labels, man, woman, boy, girl, because it's the order of our society. It's the laws that are applied to everyone's specific label. And when the simulation changes, the labels changes. They drop off. Expectations of certain things changes. <sighs> There'll be things out there that are gonna, gonna they're gonna instigate the acceleration of people's expectations. And so then the, where the whole jilly juice comes in is that we're not expecting to pass away. And so then we're not going to be adopting certain labels and belief systems and certain scientific, political, or religious dogmas. Because if you're going to say, okay, I believe in indefinite life and I want to follow that and feel the pain and understand my first lines of defense, blowing my nose, not taking part in the antibiotics or all the therapies that are out there, then you almost have to, you really do have to give up the politics, your religion, and your scientific dogmas because they all feed into the old simulation of you pass away someday, you take your antibiotics, you demonize a person, place, or thing, and you stay stuck in a very, very limited existence and reality that, that is changing and that you're not changing with it and you will die with it. And that's why you've seen me get kind of, well, you saw me drop people around me or confront them. Or say, hey, you know, maybe at some point reconsider your religion, your culture, your horoscopes. Give my information to your family and friends. See what see what they think. Be be some kind of pioneer in your world, not just a follower, but a pioneer. People can't do that. They can't be pioneers. They have to be a follower. When you're a pioneer, you are up against people telling you, even even when you're up against the mainstream and you're playing this whole anti-V, pro-V shit, well, that's also an argument the mainstream has given you because you don't understand the science behind why it is you do or don't do something. And then you have to feel pain. You have to feel the mucus. You have to get it out. You have to do the salt and the water occasionally. And usually stay home more than not when you're going through that, uh, that morphine stage where you're now releasing all those demons. But... People, don't, people even in the, in, the, in the alternative mainstream who are in those activist groups can't even go against their own activist friends. They can't even say anything. Like right now, they're, they're, they're saying now in Ohio, it's okay to use the ivermectin and the hydroxychloroquine. You know that's an antibiotic? That will cause so many T cells and B cells in people who are already at a, at a major maximum of T cells and B cells. And they're allowing it, but they, but they were against it. Dr. Fauci and all the people were against it, right? All the doctors. So everybody thought in the, in, in, in the, in the anti-V world that, oh, if, if Dr. Fauci and all the FDA and everybody's against them using it for, for, for COVID and now they're allowing it, you know, people are going to now take it because at first it was like, oh, it wasn't allowed because they thought if, if the government says, no, it's not good, then it must be good. And that's a very superficial argument that is a smoke and mirrors type of, of, of psychological operations on people who don't understand the science behind why they do what they do. And so that's part of the psychological operations of politics, religion, science. That's part of not only the Britain and UK psychological operations of Tavistock, but it's also part of the CIA, part of all of, of the think tanks in America messing with people who are in the politics, religion, and science world, who are worshiping some pundit in the anti-V world, worshiping some some rogue doctor that said, oh, not giving up their license, but they're playing the anti this game, anti that game, but they're more than willing to sell you a supplement, an MLM, or a detox, or an antibiotic, whenever you finally, you know, follow their lead. And you know how much money these people are making off of your ignorance? Because you're so willing to follow some profit? Whether it's RFAK Jr. or some other, you know, person in, 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 the, in, the, in the activist world? And, and, and yet, and, and in the meantime, you haven't done anything to change. You're taking on B-cells and T-cell memories, and you're doing all your detoxes, just destroying your own immune system, 
just and collecting the B cells and T cells, and they're eating you out from the inside, and you're getting skinnier, or you're or you're getting a more obese. And the more that this virus mutates, the more you can be taking all of your antibiotics until there's nothing left. And that's how the system figured out how people can um, give permission for their own destruction. Because we're not going to try to repeat history where someone is going to figure out who passed away, who doesn't. You are going to choose to pass away. But you'll think that you fighting the system is going to help not only you, but your friends and family. No, because your friends and family are going to do, what, or do or not do what they've been doing. And they already have the predispositions. They already have issues. They're taking on all these microbes. And you see people are like, oh, we don't have to wear masks anymore. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is so great. And so the system's like, okay, we're, we want you to wear a mask. We're going to cut down the economy because this virus is really ama- is really crazy. And people were pushing back on that. And I, even I did too because I didn't know any better until I felt these viruses. When I started feeling these viruses, I knew exactly what was going on. When people are under the influence of drugs and remedies and therapies and distractions, they don't feel these viruses. They think it's nothing. They think it's just a fucking cold. Oh, honey, when you're taking on microbes, and when people say, well, I haven't, I haven't had any kind of infection at all since this. I don't think we need a, a, a therapy or this. I've been doing all my little therapies, my own little, you know, tea tree oil and other shit, right? And I'm like, oh, honey, you have it in you. It just hasn't expressed itself. But when it does express itself, you're not going to test for this for the COVID. You're gonna, you'll are gonna, you be testing for cancer. You'll be testing for lymphoma. You'll be testing for Parkinson's. You'll be testing for such aggressive diseases because you did not take this shit seriously. You were on your antibiotics. You were out there with no mask, out there in public, and you know you're immunocompromised. And that's how the system gets you to destroy yourself without somebody else making that choice for you because they've given you every single opportunity to to uh, stay home, stay safe, eat food, understand the J-Juice, even though they demonize me, I'm not in jail because J-Juice is not antibiotic, okay? And so they've given you they've given you every single choice to understand my point of view, to understand their point of view, to stay home, stay safe, wear a mask, get a V or not get a V, whatever, and you have chosen based upon the people that you hang out with, based upon the fact that you don't want to learn anything different, based upon the fact that you have always followed the system. Whenever someone gives you an argument, it sounds like it's like counter to what the mainstream is. You glom onto that because that's how people have developed their identities. They don't understand balance or understand how everything is, 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 has to work together and you have to feel some kind of pain. You have to feel, you have to understand your first neck lines of defense. You got to take in new information. The reason why they use censorship because people take shit to extreme. People go from one end here and go all the way over here and not understand there's a process in between. I did it too. Okay? And so you have to understand that everything is a transition and you can't make correlation equals causation. You have to understand your own predispositions. You got to realize that there, these viruses are people's B cells and T cell defenses laced with their own DNA and all of their issues and problems and gifts that are laced into one little mucus that you're going to breathe in and then you're going to try to destroy with your with your different therapies, whether it's herbal remedies or other stuff or the actual therapies that are being uh, administered. And then what? It goes to sleep for a second, but then it replicates and then it starts cannibalizing. And then you see people get so big. They get so obese because all that life is replicating or you see people get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. Or they're on their diets. And, then, and, then, and you'll never make correlation equals causation as far as your lifestyle. You'll never make that connection that you never understood that you have to eat all food in the food supply. That was even weaponized against you as far as your thought about food. You thought GMO was poison. You were too busy worrying about the water supply that had fluoride in it. I did too. It... it I finally have been brushing my teeth with toothpaste. But for the longest time, I thought the toothpaste was poison. For the longest time, I thought the water was poison. For the longest time, I thought certain foods were poison. It's all psychological, and there are campaigns that get people to think that genetically modified is poison, to get people to think that, that toothpaste is poison, 
that get people to think that everything is poison when they hold the predisposition inside. And so, yeah, they might feel something from certain things because they hold predispositions and allergies. Doesn't mean that it's poison, but that's what's going on is people are projecting their own weaknesses and their own hell onto everybody else and then starting campaigns. And then somebody figures out, oh, with all of these different antibiotics and things that are being, that are circulating and the bodies are under attack, developing a resistance against wheat germ, a resistance against tomatoes and eggs and milk and meat and cheese and nightshades and fish. Then people are stuck with food allergies. They don't have a diverse food supply. They're starving. And then they're undergoing more therapies to deal with that that is then being blown out into the atmosphere for other people to take on another allergy that's going to commandeer their own immune system and weaponize their body against the food supply so they can't even take in the nutrition because the body has so many defenses against the nutrition because it's being used in all the therapies. And so then when you think about Earth Day, is nothing more than just a campaign. Hey, clean up garbage. Okay, great. But what about people's immune system is full of fucking garbage? And they don't get it because they're too busy on the bandwagon of anti-V and pro-V, but they're still steadily taking all their therapeutics, their MLMs. They're too busy selling water. For what? I have tap water. If it's not Flint, Michigan, with all the lead because they changed going from one place to another, then you're perfectly fine. If you're not in Flint, you're fine. And so, and so... And so then you're, you're so busy over here, all distracted, no different than people watching the Johnny Depp trial all the time and, and mentioning that, which I did, but I was like, kind of like, oh, okay, I get it here. You know, you, you're, you're too busy out there demonizing your politicians. They're just as snowed. They're just as playing the game and getting paid for it. No different than those that go to work at biotech every single day splicing and dicing and, and, and taking proteins and purifying them and doing stuff relative to their little job. Do they see the bigger picture? No, or they wouldn't be doing it. But they get paid very well for it. When you get paid very well for what you do, you're not going to say too much. If you're getting so much social capital for all of your activism, you're not going to change anything. When people stop listening to you, will you change? No, you go back to where you were before. Be like, okay, well, I guess this is nothing anymore. I'll just go back to my old lifestyle. I see that happen too. People are going, you know, they're on their Facebook saying stuff and then no one's commenting on anything else. And you see them kind of slide back into their old lifestyle. Doing nothing to change. Even people that they used to be on the JJs, they did it for a minute, couldn't handle, couldn't evolve with me. And now they're back to their old lifestyle, doing the same shit. It was like as if Jilly just was never really, you know, made an impact on them. No, because that was never their intention. Their intention was to capitalize on the surge of it but never really understand the actual science and evolve with the science behind it. And that's, the system knows this. The system knows how short-sighted and how, how, how of a slow or short attention span people have around things. But hey, when you, when you allow these arguments out there to flourish, like these, these activists against the V or the pro V, people, get something from it. What do they get? They get accolades. They get social capital. They have a purpose in life. When you have no other purpose in life except to be an activist for or against something, because you're just floating around there, that's why post religion science were there too, is to give people purpose. And then when you give somebody a purpose, then you can go and commandeer that purpose. And then tell them what to think, how to write, what to feel, when to feel, when to work, when not to work. All these things, when to celebrate something, when not to. And then when you realize that words create the world, words are what develop the different simulations. And you understand the etymology behind the words. Then you realize everything is hidden in plain sight. And there's so many different operatives out there that work in these activist fields, whether on InfoWars or they're in the activist groups in GMO or the anti pro -V. You don't know who is an embedded traitor to your specific cause you have no idea how many people are working for the system 
And so unless you develop your own simulation, you will always be following somebody else developing your purpose. And so on this lovely Sunday, where people are dutifully going to their different churches and synagogues and whatever, that's what America was built on. That's, that's the, the politics, religion, and science. That's the dogmas. That's the stuff on the, on the, on the dollar bills. In God we trust. You know why I was on that bill? Because that's reinforcement. That is programming. That's reinforcing the programming. And when you have your presidents going to the Catholic churches or the Church of England or the Church of this, Church of that, just reinforces it. Oh, I see it. All right. All right, I'm going to go. But I wanted you guys to, to understand that the... It doesn't matter where you came from. All that matters is energy cannot be created or, con or cannot be created or destroyed, only converted. And words can be converted. Chemistry can be converted. Your whole society can be converted from one simulation to another. And we are actively releasing the old simulation with this crazy new virus that is mutating and then all the, th the aggressive therapies attached to it. And then when you're out there, you're going to be hit with so much stuff. And if you have predispositions... They are going to feel, you're going to feel stuff until you release them. And then when you finally re release all those demons and you go out in public on a minimal basis, you will be hit with stuff as far as mucus when you come home. And you'll want to sleep. You'll want to eat. I mean, it wasn't aggressive sleeping. I mean, I, I did take a nap for a few hours yesterday after being out on the boat. But I would I didn't eat nearly as much as I thought I would. And... um. I have a little bit of mucus, but not too much. It's not bad. Okay? Now, if there's a new variant and that comes in, I might it might hit me a little bit harder. It'll definitely take out other people that are not very uh they're not that are immunocompromised. And so if you haven't really done the J juice, <laughs> maybe it's time that you do it and you stay out of the public. Because you will get the public's Locals and the activation in your immune system just by going outside during the weather. And so now it's time to start taking your life seriously. The answer is not out there. The answer is not demonizing a person, place, or thing. The answer is within you and releasing your own demons and realizing how much of a psychological operation simulation you're in and you don't need to take part in it. You can be the change, which means that you write your words differently because everyone is going to take their own personal protection, whatever it is. But the issue is they don't keep it to themselves. So if you, if people do personal protection and they stay at home, who can blame them? Nobody can blame them for spreading infection. Okay. But I don't do any personal protection. I just eat and that's it. And I take no remedies and I take no therapies. Which means I can't be the one to be, I'm not the one to blame for all the T cells and B cells being released attacking people. I'm taking other people's crap in and I'm releasing it at home. And no one's getting it except for my husband. And he's releasing it wherever he's releasing it. But that's not my problem. What he does. And so I know I can comfortably say I am not contributing to this pandemic. Can you comfortably say that, that you're not contributing to this pandemic? Because if you're on all the different therapies, whether it's the holistic, allopathic, home remedies, detoxes, herbs, cannabis, drugs, whatever, if you're on all that, you are contributing to the pandemic. And if you're not and you're releasing stuff and you have predispositions, it's better to stay home because you'll be releasing everything you've ever done in your whole life. And it will, be, it will, it will turn into another pandemic too. And so if you're sick and you're, re you're releasing mocos and you're doing the jeju, stay home for the most part, if you can. If not, you are part of it until you, re until you release everything. And then when you'll know that is when you don't visit anybody and you're, and you're at equilibrium and you're at home at equilibrium, everything is great until you go out and then you catch something. Then you know you're not the one that's doing it. Somebody else is, all, is taking their antibiotics and all of their remedies. 
And then you can actually say for sure you're not contributing to the pandemic. All right, bye.